Hey guys, this is Felipe Andreoli here. Welcome to the channel. I realize many of you are new to the channel. You came here via the Davy 504 speed run challenge, which is what we're going to talk about today. So welcome. A little background on myself for those who don't know me. I've been a bass player for almost 30 years. I play in a band called Angra for 20 years now. I also play with Kiko Lorero, Megadeth guitar player. I play with him in his solo uh, stuff. I'm also working on my first solo album and I have many other projects. But we're here to talk about the speed run challenge. Some people have suggested that I might have sped up the video. So did I speed up the video? I invite you to watch the video, see what it's all about and then make your mind and decide for yourself if you still think the video is sped up or not. Speaking about the challenge itself, I think it's a great idea by Davey. I love his channel. I've said it in the other video as well. And I think it's a way of engaging people with the bass. This is not necessarily valid musically, but it is valid in terms of bringing attention to the bass, bringing new players, showing the bass to new people. And in this sense, I thought it was a good idea to do the challenge especially because many many people suggested that I did so. Before I go on, I invite you to visit my web store where you can buy this t-shirt among other stuff, so the link is in the description. Of course, being fast per se doesn't mean much. Most people won't have a gig or a work situation or, or even a band where this kind of speed will be demanded from them. So we end up not really practicing playing that fast because it's just not practical it's just not useful on a day-to-day -day basis it's usually much more useful to learn how to groove how to play in time to have nice tone how to extract the best possible sound from the bass and learning music learning to play music to be musical speed is of course cool and i love it but it's just not an asset that you're gonna use very often as a professional bass player but in my case, playing in Angra, we have a lot of really fast stuff. We have songs at 185 BPM, 205 BPM. Sometimes the whole song will be really, really fast. So it made me develop speed and strength and stamina. To be able to withstand a show of two hours, two and a half hours and still be able to play every note, every night and not like destroy myself, destroy my arms. And that of course forced me not only to achieve the speed but also the technique where I can do it without hurting myself, without over demanding my body. So when I saw the challenge that involved speed, I said this is the time that I get to accept one of Davis challenges. He's done a lot, but this one particularly spoke to me because of what I do. And of course, there's much more to the base than just speed. And if you are a regular viewer of Davis channel, you realize that he's always much more focused on groove and melody than speed, but it's just fun, so I did it. By the way, there are tons of other players that could smoke anyone in a competition like this, like Hadrian Ferrod, like the Brazilian Michael Pipoquinha, or Junior Braguinha, or Glessio Nascimento, or bass players like Bubby, another Brazilian guy, Ricardo Paraíso, Frederico Malaman, my friend Frank Hermany, all these players and many more. So how did I achieve the speed? How did I get so fast in that video? So how did I achieve the speed on that video? Did I speed it up? Or is it about technique? Or is it about perfecting your craft? Economy of motion, playing relaxed, not any stronger than you have to play. And for this situation in particular, you have to realize that I'm not in a show with a live audience and all the pressure, lights and whatnot. I am in my studio. I can do as many attempts as I want. I can rest between the attempts 
so I can be in top shape for every attempt and I can do it many times until I achieve one that I think it's great and I just have to post one just one is enough so if you try 30 40 100 times but one is great you can post that one and it's all good but I assure you that I did not speed up the video and here's why I don't have to because I have as I said perfected my technique to a point where I can achieve that speed and I'm, I'm not saying that I'm the fastest or that no one is gonna beat it as I just said there's many guys that could beat it easily but I'm gonna show you a little bit how I do it and what's my approach to the technique if you watch the video you realize that I did it in two ways the first way was we three fingers in the right hand and I use a sequence that is ring medium index always in the same sequence and when you play with three fingers it's not practical to play four note patterns or five note patterns you will do much better if you play three note patterns six note patterns anything that is a multiple of three that's why in my first attempt I changed the way I did the exercise so that I could do it with three notes per string and let me speak a little bit about this bass and why I used it this is an Ibanez EHB 1505 MS so EHB stands for headless bass because it doesn't have a headstock you will tune the strings at the bridge so you have the tuning pegs at the bridge and why why do we do it because you want a shorter smaller lighter instrument and that's the way to achieve it MS stands for multi scale the concept is that on the lower strings you have a longer scale in this case 35 inches and on the higher strings you have a shorter scale of 33 inches and why because on the low strings the longer the scale the better it sounds the more it holds tune the better it responds especially when you tune it down like half step one step or more but you really don't need that for the higher strings and it's usually where you do a lot of phrases a lot of soloing so it's better to have a smaller scale so you have less reach to do when you're soloing or doing phrases this bass is brand new it just arrived last week and I'm playing it all the time so that's why I decided to do the challenge with it and I'm pretty sure that Davey if he sees the video he's gonna say something about the fact that this is a five string bass 24 frets and I did not play all the notes in this bass what I did was I played on four strings and I used 21 frets just like he did the difference is that his bass is a four string 21 frets bass and mine is a five string 24 frets bass but I, I think it's fair if you're gonna compare the speed to play the same amount of notes and that's why I did it but I'm totally cool with Davey coming up and saying that I was cheating that I was using hacks that this is illegal or whatnot it's part of the humor and the comedy of this channel which I love so much so coming back to the technique that I used I told you that I played three notes per string right <laughs> The challenge here is to synchronize both hands so that you can play really fast on the right hand but you can follow with the left hand sometimes when you try to go too fast you can lose synchronization and it doesn't sound good at all so what I suggest you do if you want to try with the three fingers technique is just start slow and you will probably have the tendency to play like this instead of So my suggestion would be start with two fingers in a speed that's comfortable for you listen to the sound and then change to three fingers trying to achieve the same sound the same rhythm the same spacing between the notes like this
and of course you can speed it up as you get good. And you will realize that it will come a time where three fingers will be faster and easier than two fingers because you're dividing the work of two fingers by three. So each finger will work less. That's why it's faster, right? If you play with two fingers, you have to do a little bit more effort to reach the same speed. In my case, there's a limit where two fingers is not enough anymore and I have to resort to three fingers. But it has its challenges as well. Like I said, playing four note patterns is not as easy with three fingers. That's why I decided for the three note per string pattern. And then when I reach the 21st fret, I have to do one note per string. Just to complete the amount of notes that I had to play. You can do it with three notes, also with six notes. You can do it, but in my case it's not as clean because you have to reach, you have to move your left fingers very fast, so it was just easier to do it like. And when you get really warmed up, and you try a few times, you can get really fast using this technique. Right? So, it's not sped up. It's just a matter of technique and being able to achieve speed without cramping your body, without making too much effort, playing relaxed, right? Listening to the notes, trying to be as precise as possible. But of course, if you play with two fingers in the right hand, the consistency is easier to achieve. Because when you play with three fingers, your fingers will be kind of distant from each other on the string. And this little difference is enough to create a difference in sound and tone from each finger. So my ring finger is playing closer to the bridge and my index finger is playing closer to the neck. The more you come to the middle of the neck, the softer it is, right? So it's way stiffer at the bridge, way softer in the middle. And the sound changes. If you do a simple test like this, you can see how different it sounds just by moving your hand. So with three fingers, you kind of stuck with this problem. When you play with two fingers, they're much closer to one another. So it's easier to have more consistent sound. And in my case, since I play with three fingers as well, I use the ring finger, even when I'm not, I'm not playing it, to play together with the middle finger when I pluck with two fingers. is a real challenge because you have to slide your finger from the fourth to the fifth fret and this is not very easy to do when you're really fast but with practice you can get there right I'm not as warm as I was when I did the video. I didn't warm up previously to this video because I'm not doing the challenge again. I'm just showing you how it's done. But when you do this whole run, when you get to the end of it, you're really tired, right? Because it's a lot of effort 
to play all these notes that fast. For me, with two fingers, is a real challenge, right? So what I did, I spaced my attempts with like one minute between them. So I had time to rest my arms and then start again. And if I made a mistake, I stopped, gave it some time, rested a little bit more and tried it again. And honestly, I didn't try many, many times. I might have done it like 10 times with two fingers, 10 times with three fingers. Then I listened to it, saw which one was cleaner and faster. And that's the one I posted. Of course, I'm not trying to oversimplify the technique. It's very involved to get to the speed. And that's why I have an online course called Technica Total or Total Technique in English, where I teach all the techniques for playing with your fingers, for tapping, slap, and whatnot. Slap is a nice and easy way to get fast without making too much effort. Because you can combine the notes you play with the right hand with hammer-ons and pull-offs and whatnot. So this combination creates very fast patterns that sound really cool. So in my course, I teach all of that and much more. It's in Portuguese as of now, but I'm working on a translation. I should have it done in about two weeks. So if you speak English in two weeks time, I'll have the course completely translated. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to try the challenge as well. You don't have to be the fastest. Just try it, just challenge yourself, try to do it. I'm sure you'll get better just by trying and watching yourself and seeing where you can improve, what mistakes you're making. Watching yourself is a great tool. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and I'll see you next time.